Binil. Uh, welcome to the 2018-60 induction webinar. This is for all new students starting next week for the 2018-60 session in the CSU IT Masters courses. Uh, tonight we have myself, Chantal Hale, work with IT Masters. I help uh, with the designing of the courses and also with the running and the, uh, speaking to the mentors. You will hear from me at some stage during your course. We also have Neil McCosh. He's our new student support officer. If you haven't spoken with him already, you will speak with him soon, I'm sure. Um, and he'll be here to help guide you through your first few weeks of studying and answer any questions and, and make sure you don't feel a little bit like you've been thrown in the deep end. You ready to start off? Are we ready to kick off, Neil? I'm fine, Chantel. Great. Um, so tonight we're going to cover just a lot of welcome information, you know, covering what is in the courses and uh, how to find your interact pages and all your student portal information. We also have a lot of information about just general study tips. Not at all of you, but many of you haven't ever studied at a university level before. And we wanted to make sure that you had the tips and tools and techniques ready to get to the stage of being able to study. I'll pass over to Neil for this one. I'll just find my unmute. I think that's working. <laughs> Thanks, Chantel. Look, I have a lovely role of talking to new students, looking after them, helping them with whatever issues they may have. And basically, if you succeed at your studies, I've done my job getting you into the course and knowing your way around and a few tips, etc. I know one thing a lot of you will, or not too many, I hope, will come to me is um, looking for extensions. And I can help you on that on any subject. But let's try and do it before the due date. If you come to me after the due date, it'd want to be a very, very good reason why I'd want to accept that. If that makes sense. You should ask for a, uh, an extension before the actual course, before the actual date, sorry. Thanks, Chantal. Um, you should be on one of these courses. Um, get on your chat that you can see there if you're not on one of these courses because you're in the wrong session. Basically, we IT masters, and I'll tell you who we are in a moment, and Charles Sturt run all these courses, some business courses, Bachelor of Business Admin Management. We run some very technical courses, the very popular cybersecurity courses cloud computing, networking, and also a very popular course as well as project management in any area. And that's all including the graduate certificate, which is for subjects from the masters that many students like to or have to because they haven't done a course, a unique course before, do the graduate certificate, move to the masters, get credit from, you know, you're not doing any extra subjects this way. You do four subjects plus eight, making up the 12 minus any credits that you have got. Yeah, thanks, Chantal. Is this me or you, Chantal? I think it's me. It is okay. you. Him. Yes, it is. Sorry about that, Chantal. Look, when I have spoken to many of you, I've also emailed you after and shown you where the, your course details are in the handbook. Now the handbook is the official record of courses that you have to do, subjects that you have to do, sorry, like if there's two core subjects, you must do core subjects. There's no way around of getting out of core subjects without the course director's permission. But it also tells you how many electors from a certain type I'll say type A, and then you might have to do a couple from type B. We, will, we have a system that'll tell you if you pick a subject that's not even in your course. It'll pop up, somebody will ring you and say, have you got permission to do this subject? If not, well, why not? Do you want permission? Do you pick another subject that's more appropriate? And that's how it works. But as far as you picking the course subjects and doing the right, it'll, electives from the right streams, 
that's up to you. And it's pretty clearly stated in the handbook, which will be emailed to you. A little bit about IT Masters. Um, 2002, IT Masters is a, was a recognised training organisation and Charles Sird got together and tried to make their courses more relevant. More relevant to their target audience by making them industry focused. And when I say industry focused, there's a couple of ways. We get professional IT people to run the courses, usually working professionals or who are experts in that area. And we also prepare on a lot of our subjects for industry certifications. So we'll cover the content and with a bit more study, you should be able to go and pass that industry certification if you're eligible to sit it. And because the, the vendors who make up a lot of these certifications keep them up to date, we keep them up to date and have to run the latest versions. So if you hear of masters that uni is becoming out of date, you won't find that on this course. We're stringent in following that up with current professionals and current content. Um, the IT masters subjects, you'll find they start with ITI or ITE or MGI. And we'll send this out now, email tomorrow on what we've covered tonight and all the other subjects. Um, are run by CSU. So apart from running subjects and getting the proper professionals to run the industry subjects, we also market the program at trade fairs and run our short courses and show people how distance education can work pretty well. Yeah, so I think that's me, Chantel, for a moment. Yep. Um, so I'm going to speak a, a little bit about Interact and, and some of the information you can find here. The first place is the um, IT Masters course site, and that covers all of the IT Masters subjects. And you'll find that on your Interact page if you scroll all the way down, just above all of, you know, the RCSU and that sort of thing. So interact2.csu.edu.au, um, and you'll find uh, IT Masters course site. And that has information on course contacts and some announcements and handbook and course diagrams and all sorts of things that may be interesting. You probably won't spend a lot of time there, but it can be really useful if you get a little lost or uh, need some information about the course as a whole. Uh, you'll find information there about Arif, who is our course coordinator, um, and his uh, assistants back in Chelsea. But speaking of Interact 2, we've got, um, have, I hope many of you have been onto your Interact 2 sites. And this is where you're going to find all of your information about assessments and uh, the subjects that you're studying and your weekly learning materials and, and all that sort of thing. And discussion forums are going to be really important to you. Uh, so you can see here, it's interact2.csu.edu.au. And again, you will have been sent these links, but I just want to make sure um, you can see all of the subjects there that I'm just, I've got on my list, but you'll have hopefully a few less. Uh, and if you go in there, you'll find information about contacts, um, announcements from your mentor, uh, information on the assessments that are due, some weekly learning materials. You can see there, topic one, subject introduction and forensic, forensic investigating introduction, which is for ITA 513. Um, and the discussion forum where you will get to contact, get to interact with your other students and probably even answer some questions about assessments. It has things like links to your online tutorial and you will get email reminders about those. Um, but it's just good to have that online re uh, tutorial link there. Um, and information about your courseware and whether it's been sent out and who to contact if it hasn't. You can also get to interact by going to your student portal, student.csu.edu.au. So this has information about your, um, the messages you've received from the university, the enrolments that you have, you know, all of the information about um, subjects that you're studying. I'm going to move this over to the other computer, sorry. Um, and you can add in and remove subjects there or add in leave. You can find out you know, your fees, all that sort of information. You'll find your grades here, 
once you get some grades. So you can add in subjects by going to that administration link on the side there, up the top on the right. Um, yeah, sorry, you can see more information there. Your enrolment will have all of that information about adding a subject, deleting a subject, all that sort of thing. And hopefully in the future, information on your graduation. Um, they also, that student site also has a lot of services and support that's available to you. Things like StudyLink, where they can teach you things about how to research or how to reference. Um, a student calendar with all of the detailed CSU guides, study guides and tips, which we'll talk a little bit about more in shortly, um, information on the library and the, all the magazine, the journal articles and things you can find there. Um, information about access and disability services, which some of you might find really important. Uh, if you, for instance, are hard of hearing or you uh, uh, have vision problems, then you can go there to find more information about the sort of the help that's available to you. Uh, most of the time you will find the help that you need there. Of course, if you are unsure about where to go or who to contact about a certain situation, your best person to contact would be Neil, um, who can point you in the right direction and maybe even get some help if that's if he can at that stage. So again, talking about the university resources that are available to you, and you can find these under the study pages on your student.csu.edu.au page. Um, one of the great places to go to is Allen. That's the Academic Literacy, Learning and Numeracy support team. Uh, they provide free support services seven days a week, online and on campus for all CSU students. You can make 45 minute appointments with them to discuss a range of learning issues or um, assistance that you need. Um, they're not meant to, these appointments aren't meant to review specific assignments, but you are welcome to provide short and relevant examples of your work on which to frame a discussion. And so this can be via Skype or phone or any way that they can meet online with you. There's also uh, information on StudyLink here. So that's got a choice of up to 20 short subjects that can boost your university studies. They can give you academic skills that you might need like essay writing or chance to fill in any knowledge gaps um, and more information on studying online. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about this soon, but there's a lot of study guides and tips there. And they're, they've got a, real, a lot of really useful guides that cover a lot of things that aren't always common knowledge to students, particularly those of you who are returning to study after a really long uh, break from study or who have never studied at a postgraduate level or a university level even. Um, it even has things like weekly planners so you can plan out your study um, and then more long-term long planning to help sort out when assessments are due. It's got informations on, information on things like critical reading or how to take notes effectively, learning styles and academic writing and referencing. Those things that you really do need before you start studying um, and can really mean the difference between a pass and a fail or even a high distinction in a pass. Um, just a quick question. Is it possible, um, does the, do the university resources have, say, because um, I've never taken, say, an exam online because I'm doing this um, from Canberra. Does it mm -hmm. have the like, exam information? Like, not about the exam, but, like, what to expect? Um, they will have information about preparing for a study and for study and that sort of thing. But you will find more information on what to expect in an online exam situation on your interact pages for your subjects. For the subjects yeah. that offer um, e-exams, you'll have more information there. They will also have information about if you choose to sit a paper-based exam, uh, what goes on in that situation. Okay, I didn't know we could do that if we're doing it by distance. Uh, yeah, so for our subjects, for the IT master subjects, you'll have the choice between online exams and paper-based exams. Uh, CSU ones, some of them will have online exams, some of them won't. Um, uh, if it's paper-based, it'll just be sat at an exam centre within a certain distance to your house. So if you're Sydney or Melbourne, it's easy. But even if you're located rurally, they will locate an exam centre for you to sit your exam at. So that's one, that's like with the study centres you get like from, say, Dimension Data, which, which allow you to do the CompTIA exams. It's like one of those sterile conditions. 
Uh, yeah, it's not uh, entirely similar to those ones. Um, often you'll find it's a local hall or something where they have, because these are paper-based exams, so you'll go into a room and you'll just get a clock and there'll be a bunch of other students sitting exams, particularly in the yep. big areas. It'll be a bunch of CSU students. But yeah, the sterile environment where making sure that no one's cheating and no one has any extra information with them. Yeah, okay, beautiful. Okay, great. Chantel, Neil here. Um, have the exams proven popular? They have. Um, it's an interesting one to, to watch students take those. Uh, we have been introduced, we've introduced e-exams um, probably two years ago now and they're sat at home or at your office in a quiet space um, and that just involves a, an online proctor who has access to your webcam and your screen and they're just making sure that you don't have say your phone with you or some notes taped up behind your computer. Um, again there'll be more information on those in your uh, subject when you come to exam time and booking an exam for that but it is um, a really a, we think a valuable offer for our students because you're all IT guys um, a lot of you haven't written more than a few sentences on a piece of paper a day since for the last 20 years so the uh, for a lot of you going to an exam center sitting down and writing out your answers sounds uh, like a bit of a nightmare and so this gives you the opportunity to just type it into your computer. Um, I think I've got a little bit more information on that when I talk about assessments, but uh, for now, it's just a pretty exciting offer for you guys. Um, so we talk a little bit about uh, time commitment for as students. Uh, so we've got three sessions per year, actually five sessions per year if you're taking the, um, the interim sessions, but three sessions for you, per year for you guys. Um, and they ask about 10 to 12 hours of study per week. And Neil's going to speak a little bit about this, I think. Um, we've got a schedule coming up. Probably should have moved this slide down later. But just letting you know, you can do one subject or up to four subjects per session, but we don't recommend more than two subjects for anyone who's working full time. And you can take a leave of absence anytime you want. So you can say, oh, my wife's having a baby. I really don't have time to um, study a subject this session or I've planned this holiday and I really I don't want to have to bring my textbooks with me so um, you can then have a leave of absence in that session and just pick up your study in the session further. Um, talk a little bit about study spaces. Studies have shown that the place or the context in which you study affects how you'll remember that information. It can sound a little hokey to say that you should set up a study space, but it can be a major factor in how well you achieve your study goals. Never study in your bedroom if you can help it. Um, that will impact not only how well you remember the information that you're learning, but how well you sleep. Um, if possible, you should find a place that's comfortable but not so comfortable that you get too relaxed. Don't make it so warm that you start drifting off, for instance. Um, don't have too many distractions in your study space. Hopefully it's happy and inviting, but not so much that you get distracted and you stop studying. Uh, it needs to be well lit enough that you can comfortably take notes. Um, and that if it's well lit enough, it means the backlit machines don't hurt your eyes. Um, if you continue to keep all of your study materials in one study space, it will encourage you to keep studying instead of getting up every few minutes to get something that you forgot or a glass of water or whatever. Um, but when we talk about study spaces, it's also important to talk about virtual study spaces. Where are you going to save your work? How are you backing it up? You can really never have too many backups. So that's an important one to consider. Um, I use Dropbox a lot and I have a folder on there called study and it just has in there the different subjects that I've studied. Um, but I also have, I keep a, a, a Google Doc, I think it is, just with every journal article I read or every bit of reading I do for a subject so that I can include important quotes or notes in that document because it just means that I will be able to find that reference later on when it comes down to writing my assignment. It's actually nothing worse than writing your assignment, remembering that there's a great article that supports your point, but not being able to find it and having to look through however many articles you've read through to find it. So if you can, keep a document that has notes on everything you're reading 
or everything that you think might be one type at some stage useful. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about assessment types. Uh, there are a bunch of different assessment types that you will be presented with when you study your, uh, your master's or your grad cert. Um, you will probably be asked to write a research essay. They can seem pretty boring. Um, mostly you just answer a question and present an argument based on facts. Um, you might be marked on subject participation. That's forum posts or interacting with other students. Um, you could have to write a business report, which often involves investigating an analysis of information um, or of an issue and recommending actions and making proposals which provide information that someone needs to help them make decisions. There are case studies where you're given a situation to examine and you identify positives and negatives and make recommendation. Presentations, sometimes audio only, sometimes a video. This one can be really scary to students. Um, we have one of our subjects, MGI 521, which is professional communications, where students have to make a presentation. And one of the most common thing we get, things we get from students after they've studied this subject is, I was terrified of this subject. It was scary to do the presentation, but it was incredibly helpful once I did it. Um, you might be asked to do labs. Often in IT related subjects, you'll be given a lab environment to work in and try out software or situations related to what you're learning. Quizzes, they're usually used to gauge where students are at a session and maybe before census date to make sure that everyone's on board and that they've been studying. And then there's the exam, which, as I was saying before, can either be paper-based, so you'll go to a, a, an exam centre, sit your exam, and it will be sent to the university and marked, or it could be online. You'll have your webcam set up and you will show the proctor around your room to make sure that you're not cheating at all, and then um, fill out your exam on the screen. Um, there are some really useful guides and we'll send a link to this with our email to you guys about um, assessments and how to approach them. Uh, so, um, and even academic writing style and, and that sort of thing. These are really useful for those of you who haven't studied in a while. Um, academic writing isn't very different from, from professional writing, but there are some tips and tricks that can help you along here. Um, and even if you are very good at professional writing. Sometimes you can use a little bit of help along the, the way on that one. So definitely check out these tips and, and guides to writing at uni. And even there's further guides about referencing and that sort of thing. Uh, this one here, assessments and how to approach them is incredibly useful for students who haven't written an essay in many years. Um, when you write an assignment, it's important to really read through your question and answer what the actual question is rather than what you think the question is. Um, every single time we have a large group of students submitting a major assignment, there is somebody who's misread the question a little bit and answers sometimes what they wish the question was or sometimes what they thought the question was. Uh, in the interest of fairness to everyone, we have to mark every assignment to the same rubric. So make sure that you are writing to what the question is and um, make sure that you've read through the rubric for writing it. Um, it's also important to consider what the assignment is worth. Um, if an assignment is worth 15%, it should take a, little, a lot less time than something that's worth 50%. Uh, word count. It may not seem that important, but it's there for a reason. You can lose marks for going 10% above or below the word count. And it's often a really good guide to how detailed you should be. Table of contents and reference list at the end of your assignment don't, generally don't count towards your word count, but your headings throughout do, as well as in-text referencing. Um, to be fair to other students, we do tend to take word count seriously because if you get an extra 500 words to say your point, it's easier for you than the student who stuck to the word count. The marking criteria that you'll find on your uh, subject outlines, it breaks things into chunks that are important. Um, every assignment will have someone who'll ignore something or don't write enough about it. Um, because it's at the end of the criteria or because they don't really know the answer. But if, say, a, an area of the assignment is worth 20%, that's two letter grades for your assignment. 
Um, the marking rubric is really key to how your assignment is graded. Um, it should be your main resource when planning your assignment. And it's, its goal is to tell you exactly what you need to produce to get a HD. Uh, you can create something amazing, submit something amazing, but if, and it can show an amazingly deep level of thinking, but it could fail because it doesn't do what the assessment and the rubric is asking you to do. Um, academic writing is something, I was talking about it before, but it's important to consider it before you start writing your essay. Um, that basic structure there is incredibly important for readability of what you've written. Every paragraph in your essay should be about a single idea and have this structure. Start with a topic sentence. Say your, your main contention. Support it with evidence, support it with uh, logic, whatever else, develop the main idea of the paragraph. And then finish it up with a closing sentence that restates the idea and then links to the next paragraph. If you put too many ideas in one paragraph, the marker won't see all of your amazing ideas throughout. They will end up with, uh, even if they've read every single word, which they, obviously they will, but they will miss points because they're in the middle of a paragraph. Um, and then last but not least, with these sort of guides, we've got referencing. You will have to reference at some stage during your degree. Um, it's, it can be a bit scary if you haven't done it before. So check out the guide and make sure you know the style. And again, keep references as you study, including whole quotes. Um, one of the points here that I always get a student, you know, arcing up about is don't reference Wikipedia. While it's true that Wikipedia is often more accurate than a textbook, than a lot of other things, um, because you can change Wikipedia, you can't reference Wikipedia. Sometimes it's a really good idea, uh, way to get an overview of a topic, but before you write your essay, you need to have some references that are um, from sources that are a little bit more respected journal articles, textbooks, that sort of thing. Um, and then, yeah, so again, check out Alan if you have any questions, if you need support there. Um, they will be able to provide you one-on-one -on -one details and uh, workshops and that sort of thing. And we'll send a link about that tomorrow. Now I'm gonna pass on to Neil, who's gonna talk a little bit about study schedules. Thanks, Chantel. Oh, I see you set up a study schedule for me. Okay. Look, a few things. We've spoken about a lot of resources today and you won't remember them. So we're going to put together a good email for you and send it all out to you probably tomorrow just to keep show you where all these things are. Okay. Now, the first thing I have emphasised in my only email to everyone I spoke to is you have to read your subject outline. <clears throat> you have to check, do you have an exam? Do you have a final exam? Some have all assignments. No good getting geared up about going for an exam online or not. You've got to find out if you have one. And look, and Chantel emphasised, look at the rubrics for each assessment. There's one for each one and it's critical. That'll tell you what they're marking you on, what marks they're going to give you for what they want. Just spend some time in checking and check your assignment. Did you answer what they're after? I hear all the time the markers, what they, people have written, and that's the biggest thing. They didn't answer what they're asked. So Chantel well, has emphasised it and has a lot more to do with it than me, but I can really make a point of that. Put the dates in your calendar. You know, whatever calendar system you use, make sure... They're in there. I know when these are coming up. I've got two on the same day. Oh, okay. I've got to work back and do one a bit earlier so I can get the second one in. And as per Chantel's page, you've got to get fine 10 to 12, 10 to 12 hours on each subject. Don't, don't lead to cramming. Put them in. Start now. Do it. Do 10 hours next week and the week after. And you find you won't have that mad week before the assignment where you're trying to put something not as good as you could put together and send it in. 
become involved from day one online. I see some emails going out where the first live sessions are. Attend if you can. If you can't, look at the recording. Email your instructor with questions. Get on the forums and talk to other students. Maybe set up a study schedule with someone to talk to during the subject. They don't have to live in your city these days. They can be anywhere in the world where you have students. Maybe do, you know, do the subject with someone else and talk about areas and what you don't understand with them as well as the lecturer. Now, this is adult learning, folks. You have to look for things that you don't know. No one's going to spoon feed you, and I think you're pretty aware of that. So I'm around. You come to me. If I don't know the answer and I don't know everyone, I'll find out and I'll help you. But you, it's up to you to come to me. I will, I will also ask how you're going and check as we go going through the next few weeks. And we'll have some fun. Okay, I think I'll hand over to you, Chantel, to finish it up, and then we'll ask some questions. Yeah, and that note about asking Neil or anyone is really important. When you were talking about extensions before, um, we often get students, one of the things that uh, I forgot to say earlier, we get students who didn't know that, that it was okay to apply for an extension just because things got a little bit crazy in their life. Um, we obviously aren't going to give you two weeks extension just because work got busy. But we can give you a few days because we understand you guys are adults. Um, when, you know, when life gets insane, often study is the first thing that falls off the radar. As long as you keep in contact with us, we can usually work something out. Um, so our last page here is just, we've get, set up a space for you guys to chat. Um, it's just so that maybe you could talk to some of your fellow students and I'll put it in the chat here so that you guys can hopefully link on, li click on the link and chat if you want to. Um, but the thing here is that you're all in the same boat to some degree. Maybe some of you have previous study experience. Maybe some of you have none. Um, and maybe you guys are located halfway across the world from each other, but you're all starting to study this course. You're, you're all new to our IT master's subjects. It would be good if at some stage you had a chance to talk to some of your fellow students who might be in the same situation. So if you wanted to join this hangout and just chat with your fellow students, great. If you don't have time for it, that's fine. I understand. Um, but just, it might be nice for you guys to have someone else to chat with. Um, does anyone have any questions before we wrap it up? And thank you, Gus, for your question earlier. Uh, if you, if typing out your question is hard, feel free to unmute yourself. We're here. We've got. Time. I, I, I did have a bit of a question because I, I did, I, I got a bit stumped yesterday. Um, I got a call from the Chelsea, I think it was, mm -hmm. because I, I enrolled in a JST subject. Oh. Um, yeah, and so that, that sort of threw me for a bit of a loop because there was no real, in, there was no real warning when I, um, when I signed up, when I signed up for the subject that I, you know, it wasn't able to be done. I was thinking, you know, I could do it as a, it was like a one-off thing just because of, of where I work. But yeah, yeah. No, that threw me for a bit of a loop. Um, it should, the system should stop you from enrolling in subjects that you can't study, but sometimes the system is imperfect. We will contact yeah. you. Like with, um, like with Chelsea con calling you, uh, we'll try and contact you as soon as possible. Even if we yeah. think maybe you're enrolled in too many subjects, we'll contact you. You'll hear from us. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's the CSU system will let you put nearly anything in there, unfortunately. That's why we got the backup till they, you know, they're continually working on it, it'll get better. But that's why we have this backup, it'll pop up saying, Chelsea, you know, this is a bad subject. But sometimes I can get you on other subjects if it's the same level. You got to oh, yeah, do the. What, you got to do the core, but, you know, is it a level five subject? You know, I, I'd look at that. Just come and talk to me, okay? Yeah, sure. No, um, she actually, uh, she got me to just write, you know, a justification as to why I wanted to do it. And I was just like, yeah, 
it's it's because you know I work as an intelligence analyst already. It's going to augment my existing skills. And all oh, just my... yeah, just email me and look. No, I don't need a justification. I just you know I can look at it if it's, if it's possible. Okay. Yeah, sure, can do. And if you do want to study a different subject that's not included in your degree, make sure that you get permission for it. You don't want to get to the end of of however many subjects and then not have your degree because you branched out a little bit without permission. Often you can um, branch out a little, but you just need to get that permission first. Yeah, right. Sure thing. Um, okay. So is there a repository of 2017 subject outlines for electives for us to read before we choose? We don't have them all available for you guys to access uh, just online, but you can, however, um, email into us uh, with a request for the subject outlines and we're ha we'll happily send them through to you uh, and they'll give you information about what to expect with assessments and that sort of thing. Talk to me, Kelly. I, I know you have emailed you and spoke. You know, no, I know what I've answered some emails. Just come to me. It'll be fine. And Ruth was saying, does the expected 10 to 12 of study include preparations for assessment or would this be on top of? So the idea of 10 to 12 hours of study is if you did 10 to 12 hours of study every single week and like preparing for your assignments and that, it should include writing your assignments. Um, obviously, some subjects are a little bit more difficult. Some subjects you might find easier. It all depends on you as a student. Um, and just by the nature of study, often it'll mean you'll do five hours one week and then more the next because an assignment is due. But ideally you can just continuously study 10 to 12 hours and then not have the extra crazy all-nighter or crazy hours just before your assignment is due. Um, so Dean has asked, when do exams typically fall and are these likely to conflict with standard work hours? So there's an exam week and you'll follow two exam weeks, I think, for session two. And you'll find those in your um, subject outline and also on the CSU uh, calendar. And the paper-based exams will fall on typical standard work hours. Uh, with the IT Masters e-exams, you'll get a 24-hour period in which you can schedule your e-exam. And that just means that you have, um, you can set it for 9 p.m. or whatever is comfortable for you. You will get your exam day uh, about halfway through the session, I think it is, and it will tell you the day and time. Um, and you can hopefully schedule work around it, and if not, e-exam or supplementary exam. Chantel, mm -hmm. um, where do we find out about, uh, or where do we get a review payment options for upfront or delayed or part of your part of your in pay thing under government subsidy whatever it is so all that sort of stuff yep so that would be available in your student page and i'll see if i can just find it for you and share it um but that student.csu.edu.au has a lot of information there on and um, one of them is finance statements um just resume sharing. Uh, so you can see it's got account statement, make a payment, payment due dates, that sort of thing. Um, it'll tell you all about um, where you're at and it will also tell you if you uh, have fee help um, enabled. And again, if you have any questions, uh, that's the sort of thing where uh, Neil should be able to hopefully help you out there or at the very least somebody at the IT Masters admin department. What this should be out there. <laughs> I have to cheat and find out, but I'll, I'll find out. Uh, I, I have confidence in, in confidence in you, Neil. That's fine. <laughs> oh, famous last word. <laughs> we'll get there. Thank you. Um, I always like to leave these uh, questions open for a little bit because sometimes people are. Uh, working out how to phrase it. But again, we have that Hangouts open if you want to join in. Um, I had the link up there and I'll make sure to include the link in the email tomorrow. Um, and Neil will jump in occasionally and, and give you maybe a tip or um, a, a nudge about census date or something like that. 
I see a few people are in the hangout. I can't see much happening, but where a few of us are there. Neil, you, you've got your list. You've got your things that are not core, the core subjects you're doing. Do, do they have to be completed or gone through as part of this process, or can you just focus on the core subjects and do the other parts? If like the triple S zero three two thing. Um, I'm not fully sure of the question. Um, you, like triple S. You've got that introduction to learning online. Oh yeah, that, that that's that's not assessed, or you don't have to do it. It's just a helpful. Little okay. thing, but okay. if you're finding your way around, you don't have to do it. All right, but we'll give you links that are, we think are important tomorrow and send it out to you. Okay, thanks, Chantel. It's Mason here. So um, I, I think I'm pretty clear on taking leaves of leave of absence and things like that. And I know you've outlined ten to twelve hours a week's pretty. Um, will keep us pretty safe. Um, if I'm taking, you know, a one or a two week holiday that I've already planned, um, I don't really need to take a leave of absence provided I've put the extra hours in and there's no assignments due during those dates. Is that right? That's absolutely correct. Yeah. yeah um, you, we don't actually mark you on attendance uh, okay. because we know some people can't attend a webinar. And if you can't post in the discussion forums for one week, it's fine. That's not going to reflect poorly on you. Uh, and even if you had an assignment due during that week, well, hopefully, uh, if you got your assignment done earlier, you could submit it earlier. And if you contacted us early enough, we could maybe organise an extension for you, depending on the situation. Um, it's just important that you contact us. But yeah, absolutely. If you're going for a one-week or two-week holiday, there's probably no reason that you would need to take leave. Yeah. Um, it is important to note with exams, particularly the paper-based exams, uh, you need to have your exam centre sorted. Uh, I think it's about, again, about halfway through the session and they don't allow you to change exam date willy-nilly. Uh, if you are sitting a paper-based exam and you've got a holiday booked, they, they don't really have that as a reason that you get a supplementary exam. They're pretty strict about exam dates. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, yeah, exams are usually the last two, or they are always in the last two weeks of the session. But a, a two-week break in the middle, you'll know where you are and what you have to do. You'll be fine. A leave of absence is, means you're not studying for the whole 16 weeks or we're not doing a subject. Yeah, so I, I'm moving states um, at the end of the year. So that would mean the next session I would take a leave of, leave of absence and start again in the following session. Would that be right? If you don't want to study that session, yeah. you can take leave. You can get four lots of leave. You just put it in and it's granted. After mm -hmm. four, you just you advise the course director, this is a reason. You know, we just don't want your study to go for, for many, many, many years. We're just trying yeah. to push you through. Yeah, so. okay. great. Yeah, so, uh, and I didn't want to scare anyone when I was talking about leaves of absence. Um, most people will at some stage during their study go on a holiday while they're studying. It just means that if you're going on a long holiday, an extended holiday, or um, like he was talking about before, moving states, which is obviously an incredible stressful, incredibly stressful time and you don't really want to add in extra stress, you can take a leave of absence um, quite easily. Come on, Chantelle, he was looking for, forward to the move to you told him it was fresh. <laughs> uh, it's not the first move, it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully he does know that th it is a possibility that it'll be stressful. Um, but yes, if you're going on a small holiday. I, I we have people all around the world studying. You know, exam set us, they set up exam centres in any country of the world. It's basically a nice clean room with a proctor, someone to manage the exam. So the exam centre do amazing things. Like if you're travelling overseas or working overseas, we have plenty of expats working in Saudi and um, Emirates and they're doing their exams and just works beautifully. And if you have an internet connection, the online exam is a really good way for if you weren't sure where you're going to be, because I know a lot of people are like, oh, my work might be sending me here, but I don't really know until close enough to it. Um, the e-exams is a good option there. As long as you've got a laptop, you should be fine. 
Okay, Chantal, I think the questions um, are slowing down. So anyone come to us or come to me especially after this. We'll, I'll email you my details if you haven't got them already. And we can answer any other questions you have. But Chantal and I will go through the session and send what we think is most important to you tomorrow. Um, yes, you'll hear from us tomorrow with a recording of this and also uh, some information on some fun and exciting links for you guys. Thank you. Right. Was, thanks for your time tonight and um, I'm sure I will speak to you soon. Thanks everyone. Uh, welcome to the 2018 60 induction webinar. This is for all new students starting next week for the 2018 60 session in the CSU IT Masters courses. Uh, tonight we have myself, Chantal Hale, work with IT Masters. I help uh, with the designing of the courses and also with the running and the, uh, speaking to the mentors. You will hear from me at some stage during your course. We also have Neil McCosh. He's our new student support officer.